Hello, this is Chris Kim, your favorite K-pop maniac. Today, I want to talk about Like It, Korean singer Yoon Jong Shin's mega hit song. First, I'll talk about the background of the song. Second, I'll talk about the production of the song. Third, I'll talk about the critical reception and its impact on market. And last but not least, I'll talk about the opinion of this song. Yoon Jong Shin was a legendary ballad singer who started his career in the 90s. At first, he was a featuring singer for the produce project called 015B. And then he produced uh, many hit singers such as Lina Park, Song Si Kyung, and Harim. He also did many solo works. More than 13 albums were made, and he was basically one of the godfather of a Korean ballad scene. He also started his own production label called Mystic. Mystic produced indie musicians but with a K-pop industry know-how. So they tried to bring the indie musicians and put them into part of a K-pop industry basically. He also released a single every month from 2010 to now, like every month. He did it because when he released 11th album, it just failed right after its release. He realized that in K-pop industry where everyone goes as fast and just keeps on thinking and focusing on the newest, freshest album, just one album's success or failure is decided in like a second or at least a day. And he's like, I don't want to do that. That's too bad. So he decided instead to make a single every single month and instead doesn't put anything, anything on the marketing budget. So he just can't keep going on and making his album. And he was getting old. He was almost in 50. And R&B, especially not non-R&B, just a traditional Korean or white music-like ballad, which is what Yoon jong is doing, is getting out of a trend, basically. So now for younger generations, Yoon jong Shin was a, more of a fun MC because he's doing a fit TV show. But not a musician so he was starting to be forget it and then a huge hit song like it came so first let's talk about the production the music was produced by Postino he's a producer from Mystic and Yoon Jong Shin basically works with Postino for the Mystic project there's one other guy a guy behind uh, 015B which I talked before but Postino was making a music of Mystic. He's an in-house producer basically. So he is working with the in-house producer who is a worker. He's a staff of the label. So this is one of the key reasons why you can make so many music so fast, which I'll just come back later. And Like It was a traditional ballad. It has very sentimental lyrics very dynamic melody it has a high note such a range i mean it's hook it's just constantly high at the hook it's just high 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 note so it's so challenging to sing this song and that's why this song became so popular in korean karaoke norebang so koreans love to sing a high note song it's almost like a sport Singing the high notes seems to be a challenging and fun act they can do with their friends. So constant, constantly Koreans are singing this high note singing in Korea. And Like It was one of a super hit in the Norebang Korean karaoke. And that became one of the reasons how it got a commercial success. Yoon Jong Shin's lyrics is well known for its detailed, very detailed description of a sentimental man's feeling. I mean, he wrote this song's lyrics too, obviously, and in this song, Yoon talks about his feeling when he heard his ex start dating other guy. I mean, very typical story, right? But he decorated it with a fresh detail so you can actually feel something about it. And, I mean, you can find the English translation in the Google very easily, but I want to talk about its hook. I mean, do you like it? Do you like being in love? You don't know how lovely you are when you are start loving. Yeah, it's kind of cheesy, but it kind of made sense when it was translated into Korean, I guess. 
And also, the mood of this song is very, what should I say, youth. It's very puppy love. It's something that you feel when you're adolescent almost. And at least when you're 20s and this. Actually, Yoon Jong Shin is about 50, and because of that, he, his later works did not express this kind of, you know, youth, strong love. His lyrics was more mature. It was more about his love to his wife or just older kind of love, which have just deeper yet, you know, less passionate kind of love. But this song was different. He went to Sketchbook, which is one of Korea's most popular music show. There, he said that he wanted to have this kind of puppy love song with a high range before it gets too old, before he can't sing it. So he did it on purpose. And actually, he was well known for this kind of song at the start of his career. So he just kind of came back to his old home. And he wanted to do this kind of song once again before it's too late. This song became number one on 2017, August 16th. This was his first chart number one song since 1996. Yeah, 21 years ago. It's a long time. Also, this song became number one when there was a great deal of competition. There was 101, there was EXO, all just a mega hit idol groups. And he just beated them all in the chart which is very impressive. One interesting fact is this. No one cared about this song when this song first came out. This song came out on 2017, July 22nd. And this song just dropped out of chart right away. But in Korea, everything goes so fast like this that once the song got out of the chart, no one just cares about it. That's what NS everyone think of everyone in the industry think of, but that did not happen to the Like It. How does this happen? Like It is part of a project called Listen. Mystic Entertainment, which is Yoon's company, just made a channel called Listen, I mean the YouTube channel, and then they put a song whenever they feel like it, and they make a very cheap music video fast, and then just release it on the SNS. That's it. There's no other marketing. This is very different from the typical K-pop music business. As I told you, in Korea, just once you get out of the chart, it just disappears forever. So the music label puts tons of money on marketing in the beginning so that they can put it in a certain part of the chart so that NFC can come back because everyone listens to the one of top 100 chart in Korea. Yoon Jong Shin published single every month for almost 10 years. And he did do any marketing. There's no marketing other than SNS. But he just released the song every month, believing that people who like his music would subscribe his channel on Twitter, YouTube, or Facebook, or Instagram, wherever it is. So, for the like it, Yoon gathered enough subscribers to bring the music back to the chart. And like it, basically got back to the chart. And then, Yoon released a viral video of him singing Like It of famous music channel Dingo. This song became a viral with that video. The guys started singing this song on Norebang. And when people listen to guys singing Norebang, they listen to the music more. When they listen to the music, they start singing this more in Norebang. So this cycle just became bigger and bigger and bigger. And it was the SNS and the Norebang and the streaming music service all just came back together as a cycle. In the end, Like It managed to disrupt the chart. It got number one on the chart. It was a huge shock for the K-pop industry. I mean, it's number one. <laughs> it's not even number 10. Yoon celebrated the number 10 when he first got number 10 in the chart because he didn't do that for a while. But once he got number one, he was so scared, he was like, couldn't even be happy. It's like, what the heck is going on? This was such a huge shock for the K-pop industry. JLIP did a music show called Party People. Once he invited Yoon, and he talks about this shock he had when Yoon got number one on the chart. I mean, 
in typical K-pop business, hundreds of staffs are thinking rigorously to make a good song, and when they release, they spend at least hundred thousand dollars solely on marketing, hoping that they would put it in the chart. And because it's expensive, artists can't release their music whenever they want to. They just release it once they're just super confident about it, and the label think it's good and like it. Basically, it changed their mindset. Maybe we were wrong. Maybe we should just release the music whenever they, we get the inspiration. That aha moment. And Yoon cut the budget so that he can do it. He can just release the music whenever he wants to do it. Which is totally different approach compared to the K-pop industry before. So with like his huge success, real big K-pop labels such as YG, JYP, and SM change their mind. I think we are seeing the change now with the JYP first. TWICE made six singles this year. Day6 made even more singles this year. And with SM, it's even more obvious. SM made a YouTube channel called SM Station. With this project, they're releasing music so fast and without much marketing effort. But they hope that people will subscribe to music. In fact, SM liked Mystic's movement so much that they bought the major portion of Mystic's stock now. So they are sort of the owner of Mystic. So what do I think of this song? I'm a fan of Yoon and honestly this song is too melodramatic for me a bit. But that exaggeration is what made this song so successful. So. I guess it's too old for me, but not for Korean and Nest. But as an old fan of Yoon, I'm glad to see his success, and I'm looking forward to also see the change that song make for the K-pop industry. I mean, we probably can see more singles coming from the artist, which is good for fans, I guess. And that is it. This was Chris Kim, bring K-pop news to the world, no matter how small it looks.